I found a little plot of amenity land for sale recently and it got me thinking about what I would have designed for it if it had been a viable building plot. So for this video I've designed a tiny house for this site to show how I start a design from scratch when I'm working with an empty site. It's always hard to know where to start with an empty plot, especially when I don't have a client brief either. So the first thing I do is to start getting a feel for the area. In particular, I want to see what the local vernacular architecture is in terms of materials and construction styles and traditions. In this area of Herefordshire, there are these 16th and 17th century houses with crisscross black timber frames and white render infill. I really love the clear intention to be decorative that these buildings show as it really speaks of the people who built them. So with the aim of referencing these geometric pattern buildings, I started to develop this design with the desire to also create a very decorative patterned building, but with a design that is more subdued to the high contrasting vernacular. By starting with a simple black timber clad building, I drew on the black timbers of those historic buildings. Then on top of this is layered a crisscross pattern of slim black timber battens. These are set on the diagonal to pick up the angle of the roof and to make the pattern more delicate since it's not part of the structure. And as it layers up, you start to get this play of shadows and light that turns something quite plain into something quite detailed and intricate. It's a really simple move that could also work well on very plain forms like a shipping container to really transform it into something a bit special. So the next element that shaped the building was looking at these photos of the plot. It seemed to me that there was a bit of a slope on the site, so I decided I'd like to integrate those levels into the floor plan and the building's integration into the site. So creating a series of mini terraces leading up the plot towards the house created both a stepped path towards the building and some outdoor seating areas. And by layering these seating areas into multi-level terraces, you can create quite broad surface areas around the building while still staying in proportion to it. And then this covered entrance area creates a threshold to mark the point of entry, while also providing a little bench and a space to store some logs. This creates a moment to pause before entering the building. And because the floor plan of this building is only 36 square meters, once you're in, you're into the whole space at once. So small moves like a threshold entry area can really make all the difference to your experience of the space. And then the entrance looks straight through to another door at the other end of this circulation route, which is also the floor area for the kitchen, the utility area, and the bathroom. So keeping this area open-ended to lots of light is really useful for keeping such a busy area feeling open. In the kitchen, I've used the same layout I use on most of these projects, which is based purely on knowing the minimum that I could live with. It contains all the basics like a sink, a hob, a dishwasher, an oven, and I would usually add an undercounter fridge, which is quite common in the UK. But since there's space for a tall unit, I've put a tall fridge freezer here alongside another tall storage cupboard for coats or anything else you might want to store. And I found that just this small area of tall units at the end of the kitchen was effective for breaking up this whole space a little. Without it, when you could see every area from every angle, it felt somehow more crowded or busy. But having to walk around this end of the wall to enter the dining space gives it this area its own identity and breaks up the room. It's very small though, so as soon as I tried to create any more partitions or barriers between these areas, things quickly felt very pokey. So this is where the change in level from the sloping site becomes a tool for defining areas of use within the floor plan without partitioning them off. The living area is a couple of shallow steps down from the kitchen. And just that small change in level gives this space its own cozy feel that is separate from the kitchen. 
but rather than make it feel too sunken by creating a partition between the dining and living space, as well as between the kitchen and living space, I used the bench from the dining table to act as a low level dividing point. It doubles as a bookshelf for the living area and conceals the floor space of the dining area, but maintains an openness between the two that's quite playful. Into the living area and the bottom step down from the kitchen runs round three sides of the space to create a low level platform for an integrated sofa and hearth. This kind of integrated furniture is a technique for small scale living that I've explored in other videos as being a really effective way of furnishing a place for space efficiency while also defining its aesthetic. And while I'm on that subject, I'll just explain my use of such dark colouring internally in this space. I know that light colours are always recommended for small spaces to let light bounce around, but my personal feeling is that if there are plenty of good sized windows, it's worth reflecting on what you intend to use that space for and how you want it to feel before opting straight for white. Dark colours can feel so calming and they really draw your attention to the windows, almost making the internal space disappear, especially at night. I find it a much stronger way of bringing the outside in and blurring that boundary with the outdoors. So I wanted to try and demonstrate that here by using warm greys, dark timber and black throughout this interior. For this back wall, I proposed the use of a through colour moisture resistant MDF for forming the panels and doors. It maintains that consistency of colour with the other walls, but adds a slight visual texture and richness. And there's a cupboard under the stair for the washing machine and so on, and a pull out drawer, maybe for shoes or cleaning products. And then this is the shower room, which I think feels quite luxurious in a dark grey almost black finish. And then that dark grey finish continues up the stairs to create a very cosy and intimate sleeping area. And the balustrade wraps around to create cupboard doors concealing a little bit of under eave storage. And I created a fitted bench to create both a landing balustrade and a bit of surface area that also creates open views across the room to keep it feeling as large as possible. You could even put books and things under here to act as a shelf if you wanted. So in this bedroom, I had just enough space to add a bit of luxury with a freestanding bathtub. And this is just twisted slightly away from the window to give you views to the surrounding site while also allowing access to the window to open and close it and to close the shutters. And then this end wall contains all the clothes storage, as well as hiding the flue for the fireplace and some hidden storage in these end panels and the one at the top. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Please do share my videos and subscribe if you'd like to see more. And do keep sending me ideas for projects through my website, whether that's existing abandoned buildings to substantially remodel or small challenging plots for new tiny homes.